Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to shoot without a tripod in the night. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, but right now in Los Angeles. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode for free and all the past episodes and also to get amazing discount on all my training. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to make some amazing fireworks photo. The 4th of July was just around the corner. We have the 14th of July coming up in Europe where there's lots of fireworks. Check it out if you're into fireworks shooting. This week, I'm going to show you an experience that I did of shooting in the middle of the night after sunset without a tripod. Many monuments do not authorize the use of tripods, but we still want to make nice photos. And you know, the nicer light is always at, after sunrise or during sunrise, so in low light situations. So how to do it? Well, I'm going to show this to you. But before, I just want to announce that I have a new course coming out. I've been working on it literally for years. It's called a time-lapse complete training. And what it is, is shooting time-lapse. I show you the whole workflow with live videos on how I shoot time-lapse during the day, during the night, during the day to the night. And I'm going to show you different workflows. You can see some of the results here. After this tutorial, I will show you more details about that course. But for now, let's go to Paris, to the top of the Arc de Triomphe, and let me show you how you can shoot without a tripod at night. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and here are some cool tips and tricks on shooting at night without a tripod. If you do come to Paris, and I believe you have this type of places wherever, uh, you know, in many places in the world, which is a high vintage view, but tripods are not allowed. Like I remember in New York, I was on the top of the Empire State Building, tripods were not allowed. Now, you know how it is, uh, nicer the light, nicer is the photo. So if you do come to Paris and you, and you have the opportunity to come to the top of the Arc de Triomphe, which is what you see here, you can, you know, it's actually looking, it's a lot bigger than what it looks here. And uh, when you're on the top, uh, on this side, you've got uh, La Défense, which is like a sort of a Manhattan area of Paris. And the other side, you've got the Champs-Élysées, which is a, one of the most beautiful avenues of Paris. The only problem is that the sun sets, uh, the west is here, so the sun sets by the uh, La Défense area. So um, the thing is, you know, we have all these vintage places where you can see the city, but and if you want to take a nice shot, the best is to go at sunset when you have a nice sunset. And I had a nice sunset the other day and I wanted to test the Sony A7R to see how it would uh, perform at, at sunset. So if you take a look at this photo, I shot this at uh, 10 past 10. No, sorry, uh, 28 past 10. So really like, uh, it was really like the sun was completely uh, uh, set behind the horizontal line. It was really dark. Uh, you, you could see nothing in the sky except where the sun uh, set, which was like behind this towel. So this, now, how do you do to shoot that without a tripod? Well, of course, you can use one of these little tripods that you can mount on the bar, you know, on the bar, on a, on the window or something. But I didn't have that. And, and, and you know, I, I actually have three, but I forgot it that day. And uh, that happens to me all the time. I have like a nice vintage view of something and I don't have my tripod. So here is the trick. The trick is you have to put, and that's very important. First thing first, you have to put your camera on a timer, on a two second timer. Meaning when you press the shutter, it goes one, two, and it takes a photo. Uh, this way, when you, you, when you take the photo, you're not pressing the button. So there is no vibration, okay? Then you go into manual mode and check this out. What I did is I went to one twentieth of a second, which is uh, which normally at one twentieth of a second you do get blurry shots. But if you really put your arms on your shoulder, on on your uh, on your stomach, for example, and you hold down the camera and you hold down your breath, uh, one twentieth of a second you should be able to get a sharp photo. You just have to you know take photos over and over again. Then you open. Uh, now I'm using the 35 millimeter, uh, the Zeiss uh, 35 millimeter that was built from the Sony A7R. So of course, if you have like a 35 millimeter 2.8, that's really cool. Try just to open uh, as much as you can your lens. All right. But check this out. I was only at 320 ISO. The sun was setting there, and look, the photo is pretty sharp. It is actually pretty sharp. I was really surprised. Now. Uh, as usual, I'm always shooting for the highlights. So what you do is you put your camera at 1 20th of a second, 
two second timer, 2.8 or 4.0 or 3.5, whatever is your best aperture. And then you start going up the ISO and you take a photo until you've got something like that looks like this, maybe a bit brighter because I must admit the Sony A7R ha has a, an amazing dynamic range. But honestly, you see, I'm only at 320 ISO and I got a pretty a big depth of field on this one. I mean, everything is pretty sharp. So, and let me show you the final retouch result. I'm gonna open up the shadows and look at this. Look at that. I open up the shadows and you can see the entire CTA. And that is because, well, that's because of the power of Lightroom, but it's also because uh, it's, you know, it's a properly exposed raw file The you know, we only at 320 ISO, which is cool. Now, white balance, uh, when you're, you're doing sunset on CTs, um, there's one white balance that I advise you, but it's very hard to get the right white balance right away. So what I usually do is I go to shade and I add a little bit of magenta. Okay, that is, uh, that is, that's something that I like. Uh, next, let's uh, bring down the highlights a little bit. Let's see um, something like this, not necessarily to 100, just something like this. And then let's do the white point. So I hold on the black, the alt key and move to the right until I see some spots. And then I do the same thing with the blacks. Okay, and I'm gonna take this out by pressing I. Now check this out. I mean, look at this photo. It was taken without a tripod at night. Now the only problem is, you know, I don't have a lot of exposure, so all the cars are very sharp. Uh, you know, all the lights they don't have the, the the star that I love. You know, if you if you follow my tutorial, you know I love the stars on the light. You only get that at f13, not at f2.8. But still, the photo is very nice. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we can even make it nicer. So let's crop it first. Uh, the horizontal line is not straight. I was not straight. That's because of the position of the of the arms on my chest. It's not very um, accurate. So let's just follow the follow this. I want to make make it a bit more dynamic. I want to have like two third of the city and one third of sky. So that's something like this a bit more yeah a bit more dynamic like this. And now it's time to do the magic. Now it is time to do the magic. Because that's the basic retouching. Let me show you the before backslash key to show you the before. That's the before. That's the after. It's already crazy. But check this out. Let's first go to the brush. I, I think that the, the rooftop are a bit too blue and I don't want to change my overall white balance more than that. So now it's time to do a tailor-made white balance. So I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna warm things up. I'm gonna put the yellow and the red. The tint, what uh, uh, somebody asked me the other day, what is the tint, what's the difference between temp and tint? Well, the only difference is what you see. Temp is gonna change your photo, uh, is gonna, change your photo or your white balance, or your brush towards the blue or towards the warm on the top and at the bottom towards the green or towards the magenta. That's all. It's, it, it is completely an arbitrary uh, color choice. So here I am. Uh, I've added, I've added this. I don't, uh, I'm going to add some clarity because one thing I'm going to do, I forgot to do, but I will do it later on. I'm going to, I'm not going to add clarity on the entire photo because, um, I think clarity is good when it's used selectively. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put some clarity there because uh, I want some clarity on the buildings and um, I'm gonna make sure that my flow and density is around 65, not 100, so that it's more subtle. And I'm just gonna paint. So what I'm painting is color. What I'm painting is a little bit of color and um, a little bit of clarity. Let's add a bit more a bit more warm. I'm just trying to warm things up. Now check check the difference. Uh, because you see, if I would change my white balance completely, this part of the city would be really too much warm. Now check the right part I've painted. Uh, if you want to see where you painted, you just roll over your mouse, okay? Now I've painted like this and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So it's 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 subtle, but I just, I thought it was a bit too blue. Okay, and I like to go to one's homes. Okay, so that's one thing. And then the next thing is I'm gonna play around with a red wall filter. First, I wanna make a red wall filter to enhance my sunset. So I'm gonna make a big filter like this. Okay, uh, you see that's, and I'm gonna invert. Right now, what's happening is that uh, everything, you know, uh, the, the temp and the tint is to the right and clarity is to the right. Now, I don't want clarity to the right. And it's doing, it's doing that on everything but inside of the circle. I don't want that. This is wrong. I want to invert the mask. And by inverting the mask, what, what's happening is uh, the sunsets or these colors uh, only happen in the, um, I think the sun was a bit here on the right. So I just want to enhance a little bit the sun uh, by adding some yellows and I might add a bit of saturation. 
check it out. I mean, it, it is subtle, but it, it makes, look at this, before, after. Okay, it's warmer. Okay, now uh, the lights is pretty complex, but I still want to complex the light a little bit more. So I'm going to click new and I'm going to make a little gradual filter here, which this time I'm going to go to exposure and I'm going to invert the mask as usual, invert the mask. And now I am have a little bit of light here and um, make sure the feather is at 100. Okay, I just want to add a little bit of light here. Maybe actually a little bit more, slightly more, something like this. Okay, du duplicate. Let's go here, duplicate. And I'm actually going to give you this raw file so you're going to see for yourself, uh, you know, that it is possible to shoot at night without a tripod with today's camera. And I believe you can still do that with a 5D, 6D, 7D, 70D, Nikon D800, Nikon D3S, everything. Okay, so now, yeah, I've added a bit of light here. Maybe that's a bit too much here. I'm going to lower it down it, a little bit. Okay, and then one more thing. I'm going to go to the brush. And uh, maybe I'd, I'm going to go to exposure on the brush and just add a bit of exposure here on that street just to, uh, you know, the, the eyes is going to be guided toward the brightest part of the photo. So if in the center you've got something which is very bright, like here, the eyes is going to go inside and then toward there. Maybe it's a bit too much. I'm gonna take it down a notch. Okay. And uh, and voila, I think I might add, I wanna try something. Uh, just to add a bit more contrast in terms of colors, I wanna add a little gradient filter, which I'm gonna add here. But on this gradient filter, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to temperature. Oh, by the way, uh, whenever you have a local tool like a brush, the radio filter or the graded, the gradients here, you always have like presets on top. So if you take, for example, exposure, what it does, it puts everything at zero except exposure that it's plus or minus. In this case, what I want to do is I want to lower slightly the exposure, but I want to add a little bit of blue, a little blue element in the sky. It's just to make it so we have a little bit of blue there. It just makes a more interesting sky. Check it out. Before that gradient, after the gradient, I think the sky is a bit more interesting because now it goes from blue down to warm, okay? So we are recreating. I mean, this is really the emotion I had when I saw this. Okay, uh, last but not least, on the overall settings, I want to have a little bit of minus clarity. And let's do the final, final retouching, which is uh, the sharpening. Sharpening is going to be... Uh, so let's, let's jump in to check the noise level. Now check this out, 320 ISO, it's hardly any noisy. I mean, today's camera is amazing, and I must say I'm a big fan of the Sony A7R. If you're working for Sony, please call me. I need you to sponsor me really urgently because I love your products. Okay, so luminance noise, I'm gonna be at 20. I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna, sorry, increase the noise reduction to 20. And I'm gonna put, you know my rule, if you follow my tutorial, I always put 100 of sharpening minus whatever I've put in noise reduction. So in this case, I'm gonna put about 80 of noise reduction and 20 of, uh, sorry, 20 of noise reduction and 80 of sharpening. Okay, and now, uh, last but not least, I just want to, uh, just want to do some masking. I don't want the sharpening that we just did to go on uh, on flat things like the sky. So that's where the masking comes in. You just hold on the Alt key and you move to the right until, and it makes a, a mask. And the principle of a mask is that anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. So uh, something like that is cool, you know, like 36. And this way, I've got a nice fuzzy sky and I've got a very sharp buildings. And uh, you have to see it for yourself, you know, download the raw file and give it a try. And then go out there. If you've got like in your city, you've got a nice vintage point, you know, go there. Uh, I mean, if tripods are lost, by all means, use a tripod. You know, uh, tripods are way better. Uh, but, you know, this is the... Uh, the, uh, this is uh, what you can do and it's not a lot. I mean, you can, you know, you can get authorizations to shoot uh, if you don't have a tripod, but uh, boy, it's, it's not easy to get. Okay, let me show you, see you in full screen mode. So this is the final result. Pretty cool uh, for a photo that was taken without a tripod. I really like it. And uh, yeah, and come to Paris and uh, go to the top of the Arc de Triomphe and give it a try. You just have to have a nice sunset like I had. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs, and back to me. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called the Time Lapse Complete Training. Um, this training is really by gradient. We're going to do easy time lapse and then we're going to do harder and harder and harder time lapse. First, we're going to do like complete daylight using manual mode where the light doesn't change very much. And then we're going to go from day 
tonight, which is the hardest type of time lap, and I'll show you what we call the holy grail workflow. Then, I'm going to show you the entire workflow to retouch the time lapse first, and every time we're going to go to Lightroom and we're going to retouch all the time lapse in Lightroom. But then to create the actual time lapse, I'm going to show you three solutions. One, if you're not a Creative Cloud member and you don't have Photoshop or Premiere, I'm going to show you a free solution with an old version of QuickTime called QuickTime 7, which you can download for Windows and for Mac, and it's completely free and it makes amazing time lapse. Then I'm going to show you the whole workflow in Photoshop, and then I'm going to show you the whole workflow in Adobe Premiere so you can choose whichever software fits you. Then I'm going to show you how to make 4K time lapse because this is uh, one of the things that's being used with this new 4K screen is really the 4K time lapse. And then I'm going to show you how to do panning on time lapse so that you, you add an additional movement on the top of the time factor. And last but not least, I'm going to give you over 300 raw files uh, so that you can try with one time lapse from Paris and one from Los Angeles and see for yourself and you know practice and practice until you're really good at it. Time lapse are amazing. I hope you like this course. Put a lot of work into it and you can check it out. Thank you very much. Okay guys I hope you like this tutorial and I will see you in the next episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.